Ladies and gentlemen, señoras y señores, my name is Derek Santiago, my name is Beto Perez, and welcome to the Average People Video Show. What up, Beto? Bienvenidos, man. I, I'm dog. Today's episode is going to be a good man, one. I don't even think people are ready for this yep. Average People episode, man. You got you to gotta talk to the people about to, what we're doing and how we're doing it uh, right now. So, you know, if you're just tuning in, it's your first time, you're like, well, wait, wait, hold on. Why Average People? So let me tell you, our concept came about, uh, I want to say 10 years 10 ago. 10 years ago, Jim. And uh, we were, honestly, the truth is that we were on the side of the road pulled over by the border patrol. That's really how <laughs> man, it happened. Dog, why you hit us with that, man? That's really again, what happened. Dog, no, that, again, dog. Well, again. For those people that haven't, you know, watched the previous episodes, don't know what we're about. Right, right, and right. we went with average people because that's just what, you know, average people deal with, right? We were coming back from a gig. We were on the side of the road feeling really average, man. Yeah. And they really, like, took us all the way down. Bzzz, and yep. we recognized. And, we then, recognized. You know, and then the average is like, well, people have asked me, like, well, why not above average or beyond average? Right. I'm like, because we're not above, we're not below, we're at eye level. We're at average with you. You know what I'm saying? Praise so, God. Average people, here it is. And uh, today's guest, dude, came out of a whole other state. Man. Just to come hang out with us. Dude, what's <laughs> I'm up? Sure, I'm sure he came down for the tacos too, bro. But <laughs> we're, we're, we're just going to say that that he came down to hang out with us, man. Man, it's, a, it's an amazing honor right now. I don't even know where to start uh, because uh, our next guest has 10,000 gazillion jobs, has 10,000 gazillion titles, uh, and he makes it happen somehow, some way. And he's also uh, a big part of history, not only for San Diego, for the West Coast, but right. internationally. Yeah. And he has uh, saved many people's uh, behinds. Ooh. Uh, when it comes to the music industry, man. So, man. Uh, with that said, uh, today's guest, we got DJ Jam. Let's What's go, up, man. Jam? DJ Jam in the building. Jam, Jam, I'm here. Jam is, uh, he, he, he's, man, he's, he's my partner, bro. Him and I, uh, you know, we do uh, shows around the world. Uh, we do shows here in, in San Diego. We have a weekly show. So we have some history behind us, man. Yes, but uh, before even Jam and I, you know, I, I, I met Jam probably, I don't know, what, of 10 years ago or something like that. Somewhere yeah, around so there. Almost Prior to ago. that, though, man. Jam, for like three, four days decades before that jam's been putting in work dang dude so one thing about me and again we kind of we were kind of talking about this off the camera but i like to pride myself as a hip-hop historian in san diego yep That's not right. only in san diego but the west coast right but your journey not only as representing dago 619 san diegan but also your impact on west coast hip-hop and hip-hop in general has right. been amazing man and i'm glad that i get the opportunity in front of the viewers and anybody but man what you've done and what you've pioneered, bro, is amazing. He's the official DJ is amazing. of the West. Thank is you. amazing, Thank man. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Appreciate those words, for real. So, I mean, the first time I heard about Dooney, if... <laughs> yeah, you just <laughs> was, took it back. Like, yeah. <laughs> was, from, was from Fred Sotelo. Like, right. Fred Sotelo yep. told me about when you guys were youngsters, yeah. hip-hop was just breaking. Oh, man. And, like, he... he Man, he champions you a lot. Yeah, that so was the guy. Walk, walk us a little bit about how you got started, man, because we, we could be here for, for hours. <laughs> I know. We're going to be here. <laughs> um, well, let's just say um, how I really got started with the turntable thing. Um, my brother-in-law um, was in the military here, and he was, uh, he was in the military before he got to San Diego. He had a military friend. They were really close, and he lived in New Jersey. So he came out to... Uh, to visit him because he was out of the military, right? So he came to visit for a whole summer in San Diego. And he bought his two turntables. He was a big DJ in New Jersey, in New York, right? Um, so he bought two crates of records, two turntables, and a mixer out here because he was going to be out here all summer. And my brother-in-law, they he knows a lot of people in the military, you know, hung out with his buddies. Yeah. So they gave a couple parties um during the summer because he was here you know with his equipment yeah so i was just a little kid you know what i mean yeah and and so uh, i went over to her house because they, they told me he was over here he has to turn tables you got to come see this so you know uh my mother took me over there dropped me off and i sat there and watched him i've never seen anybody do anything with turntables didn't know what it was about but i sat there and watched him practice wow and I was in the bike racing back then. Like, I was raced for a full factory. They used to send me around the country doing national BMX events. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, bro. What? Dude, I was expert. I was bad, dude. Really? You, know I mean? oh, you were, yeah. like, at the Kearney, at going, the Kearney, right, the Kearney right track? Kearney was my home track. Dang. Yes. Racing full factory. I was uh, co-factory with a company called Roadway. At first, it was a new company that came up, and I helped them actually develop racing frames because I, I was like man these are cool but you guys need to step it up and they listened to me wow right? so um i helped them with that and then i got picked up by a company called cw racing uh -huh. and uh 
I had a, uh, another uh, racing mate out here, Sean Texas. What he was a real big dude, but um, real powerful. And um, we were riding partners, so we would ride all over San Diego. But everybody would meet at my house. I had uh, uh, who was the name? Uh, uh, a couple people that ran uh, that raced for a company called Diamondback. Yeah, uh, Eddie. Man. Eddie. And we always wanted Diamondbacks Eddie, going yeah, up. Dude, Eddie, <laughs> Eddie and Mikey King. That's what they named. Yeah, they Eddie. Lived in South, they, yeah, the South Bay. Yes, that was wow. my. It was us in Sean, Texas. Big Sean, Texas. We they used to come to my house in Emerald Hills. Yeah, and we used to ride to Balboa Park. Wow. And back. So That's they would how we pedal, worked you guys out. Would, they would pedal from the South Bay all the way to your house. No, nah, they would drive to my oh, house. Yeah, and then we would all ride. To Balboa Park and back. That was our ride. Heels, you know. Was it on twenty four, twenty six? Is what you guys riding? Nah, twenty inches. Twenty inches. Dude, twenty inches. Eddie yeah. and Mike King were like superstars, legends yes, in the South Bay, man. Legends, Rice Canyon, dude. bro, with the bear claw yes, jump. Yes. Like, bro, I remember yes, those yes, days, man. man. We would be on the sidelines watching those yeah, guys, dude. That's history right there. Wow, dude. dude. And so yeah, so I got to look up to the. You know, Mikey was younger than Eddie was the. You know, mm -hmm. the sensei. You know what I mean? So I took a lot from that and used it and applied it because I had power too. I was fast. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, kind of what started me in the game is, uh, well on the BMX thing. Um, yeah. but then during the Back BMX thing in the height of that, all of a sudden the turntablism came in because yeah. my brother-in-law's friend came to town. Right. Um, so that's when my focus started to change. Right. Um, being an athlete, right. I played every sport, basketball, football, baseball, excelled in all of them from here to Dallas. I was all CIF Texas League um, when I played football. So anybody that made um, all CIF, all high school, like that all-star level, yeah. mm -hmm. they invited you to work out at the training camp of the Dallas Cowboys, oh, right? Oh, damn. Dang, so, this dude, was a long time ago. Yes, 70, Irving. around 77, the height, the when, the when they were winning, you know what I mean? Yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. They yeah. the Steelers. Yeah. So I would get to go to, the, to their facility in, in – you know, the weights and the, Get to the work tie, all that, dude, when they were just chill. Like, when have you ever seen Tom Landry without a suit and a hat? Yeah. I never. got pictures with Tom. I got pictures with the whole team. I could name every player. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But So, but for those I people that pictures. don't know, Tom Landry was the OG Dallas the coach OG from back Dallas, in the late yes, 70s, early yes. early 80s. And he always used to wear a suit with a hat. With a hat. And this is a crazy thing. Cause, mm -hmm. But but Fred Sotella used to ride bikes, too, right? Is that how you linked up with Fred? Or well, how did no, you link up with Fred in the whole music Fred, vibes? Well, that was high school. Right. Um, oh, okay. I was going, yeah. Okay. So, I, I went to Lewis Junior High mm -hmm. and Patrick Henry High School. Okay. So, that's where that that kind of crew and the Fred Sotelo uh, came into place because yeah. I was DJing, I was making mixtapes, and there was another DJ at Patrick Henry called DJ Ricky Rick. Mm -hmm. um, and they, Fred Sotelo and them kind of took him under their wing mm -hmm. because I was already connected with a, a crew called Southern California Jam Company. Damn. Um, which started before that was Mid City Productions. Um, wow. DJ Gems. Gil, DJ Gill, King, King Arthur, um, Jeff Nelson was the manager. Wow, um, Crazy J. Crazy J <laughs> was the manager. You're talking about Crazy J for like, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. Before that was Mid City, dude. That's how we made our mark in San Diego. Man. We were doing all we would do, we were doing all the parties, house parties, uh, parties at, at hotels, parties at, at clubs that they rented out. We were that crew, you know what I mean? And it was like five DJs and we all had made our coffins and lights and you know what I mean? Like came out and they were just like, whoa, the whole big speaker. That was a real, real sound system. Yeah. Real wow. sound system, you know, and Jeff was, you know what I mean? Behind all that running all the, 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 the uh, equipment and everything. And um, so we made our mark and we were also, um, I went from mid city productions to, I got picked up by another crew, which was the, one of the biggest crews in Southern California. What, what, what year was this be, between the transition to both crews? Was it like probably eight? around mid eighties, eighty, eighty five? Wow, yeah, eighty forty five ish. I would say around wow. there. You know, um, so there was another crew called Southern California Jam Company, mm -hmm. and they had DJs. Uh, I know everybody knows DJ Cool T. Yeah, yeah. Cool T. Cool Cool Z. T. Cool MC, MC Kuze, he was in the military. 
bad from New York. What up, Zay? From New York. And he was one of the originals, like Prince, Prince Whip or Whip and all of them. Man. Cool Zay was that dude. Zay, you know what I mean? Jam is giving so, you your flowers right now, Zay. Hey, what up, Zay? Cool Zay, for real. You know what I mean? He's in the medical field, like a doctor and all yeah, that. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's like, the homie. Mark the homie. Yeah. You know what I mean? But cool MC, T, Terry. Cool T and MC Cool Zay. And then there was a, uh, a, another DJ, uh, DJ Oz. DJ Oz was from New York. Bad. When I'm, dude, I can't even tell you like these DJs and how they got down and the blending techniques and all that was just like, I can't. And, and so the, the guy that ran that was named uh, Steve Franklin. He worked at UPS. He was buying houses left and right. That's all, dude. Every t- we would go take us to lunch. He'd have the papers out while we're eating, looking for properties. All the time. You know what I mean? Because like that's back, how they used to do it. Pre internet. Back, back <laughs> that was then, the internet. Huh? Back then, this dude probably had 20, at least 20 something houses around town. Workaholic, worked at UPS till hours in the morning and did this. You know what I mean? Um, so that was the crew I belonged to. And Fred Satello and everything, I was at school. I was doing mixtapes. And then we kind of linked, you know what I mean? Because they took Ricky Rick under their wing. And then I was the guy from Southern California Jam Company, but yeah. we were all going to the same school. So that's Fred. We started doing parties, nice, um, and together, and yeah, just blew up that whole audience. So what I was, trip. yeah. So I was with Southern California Jam Company. They did the commercials on the radio. the The guy that they had doing our commercials worked at KFMB, a Channel Eight. Channel Eight. Yeah. The dude that you know does a little voice. When he just says stuff, you know what I mean? Between yeah. the programs, that guy, right? That had that distinct voice. Yeah. Dude, there has never, and I'm I'm saying this right now, <laughs> there has never ever been the at the commercials that they used to do for us when we played, they don't have commercials like that anymore. You would have thought Run DMC was coming to town. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, you would have thought. Are you serious? <laughs> there hasn't been a party like this in years. <laughs> like the, and it was just so, but it, dude, you had to go. <laughs> Sounds you know like I mean? somebody I know. <laughs> you, you, would, you had to go packed. City College, San Diego State, Montezuma Hall, yeah. packed. That's, you know what I mean? Man, dude. Yeah, so it was, man, that was a glory heyday of parties when you used to go to parties and sweat. You know what I mean? Yeah. And dance and sweat until, you know, later on. And Man. The, the, the yeah, the extra sweat. Stuff, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> the, the other stuff had happened. That's Cardio. what killed it, you know what I mean, was the, was the, the gang violence eventually. Yeah. Um, but before that, dude, it was just about the party, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, big up to Fred Sotelo and them. Jet, what were, what were uh, like, what would you say were probably your top five, three to five records during that era? Like, what oh records were, like, God. the ones that were going crazy? <laughs> dude. Like, that's, I, it's crazy because people would like ask me like, man, what's your favorite songs or, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I really. I'm, During that time I'm, though, which records were the ones that were really hitting? Was it like Rumors? Were you doing rumors, like. Rumors, Big Was time, it New Bobby, Shoes, Jimmy, Can't Wait? Uh, all that, dude. I mean, the 80s, everything you heard in the 80s. Were you playing uh, like Oingo Boingo? Were you playing like the Oingo Boingo stuff too? Yeah. At the, at the Fred Sotelo parties, we got a little bit more open format. You know what I mean? We're talking Patrick Henry, mm-hmm. high school, whatever. Yeah. So we mix. You have a good mix of all that. Yeah. That's what those parties were about. Yeah. The mid-city production in, in the Southern California Jam Company parties was straight hip-hop and R&B, you know? Well, were <laughs> yeah. you uh, under these uh, – were you going and battling other crews in, in, in other states or in other parts of California? No, we weren't battling. But what we did do, Southern California Jam Company, man um, – Linked up with Uncle Jam's army. Ooh, Damn. And, and they were the leaders doing the same thing we were doing wow. in San Diego. They were doing it in L.A. In L.A. And so they would link. They did some. And this was before I came into the play. When you had Cool T, DJ Oz, the 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 owner that ran um, Southern California Jam Company, his name was Steve Franklin. Mm-hmm. And he had a brother named Kevin. And his name was DJ Magic, Right. So you have Magic, Oz, Cool T, and then every now and then they would get DJ Magic Man, Dale Sullivan, Dale, Dale Sullivan. from the South Bay mm-hmm. and bring him in. So there was two it DJ was, Magics? Yeah, there was Magic, Magic and there was Magic, Magic Man. Man. Yep. So some people would get him mixed up when he was just here. Yeah, Dale's an OG was a too. Magic. Yeah, Dale was, oh man, that's one of my mentors right there too. Cool T, D, uh, Dale Sullivan, 
um, DJ Oz and DJ Magic, dude, like King Arthur, those were the guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but what a trip. Yeah, it was yep. it was crazy. Dude. And uh, stick around because we're gonna be doing the extendo, uh, which is a, you know the extended part to to this interview. So we're gonna touch base on a couple of different more things. But what we do want to get in this episode now that we are talking about Fred Sotelo, uh, talk to us about your nonprofit. Yeah, and I'm glad that was a good segue. That was a good segue <laughs> because Fred Sotelo was very instrumental with me and my nonprofit even getting formed. That's beautiful. What's the name of your nonprofit? Uh, Community Hands Network. Nice. Um, and uh, so we, I came up with two programs that I wanted to do, which are my passions, which is music mm-hmm. and animals. Nice. Right. So with the music thing, um, we're talking about a DJ mentor program where we teach them all things DJ, radio, media, all that. And then the, that's what we're doing now, and that's our concentration. But later on, I want to introduce the animal side um, because I have uh, a rare turtle tortoise business um, wow. uh, that I just started over the pandemic. Um, I've been raising uh, crazy animals all my life. That's My life is music and animals, so I've raised three monkeys, uh, three miniature potbelly pigs, highly trained um, hermit crabs. Uh, I used to breed hairless guinea pigs wow. and actually break down their genes. Like I studied with the, the, the per, a lady who had the first hairless, and she took it to a lab to study. Right. I went and met with her. I looked her up on the Internet, and she was actually from San Diego. What? Wow. Of all places, dude. <laughs> so you, you pulled up on her. <laughs> I, 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 I emailed, she hit me back, and I pulled up. I, I was in L.A., drove to San Diego, pulled up on her, like in North Park somewhere she lived. And um, she told me all about you know how it happened, and all of a sudden we had a baby. she had a baby guinea pig, and the hair fell out a couple of weeks later. And um, so she was like, yeah, this is how you break them down, you know, and she used to raise prize you know, ribbon guinea pigs. You wow. Know I mean? And so she would take some of her best prize ones and they had the best markings and then she would interbreed them. It takes a few generations, but yeah. then the babies, a couple of them will start being hairless when they have the babies. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I learned how to do all that. I used, um, and I started doing the uh, rabbit guinea pig shows at the Del Mar Fair. Wow. Every year they have the shows. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And, and so I was one of the leaders in hairless guinea pigs before People knew about it. Damn. And I only didn't just make them hairless because, you know, you see some guinea, pig, guinea pigs and they're one solid color. And right. You see some that have patches, right? Yeah. But just because their hair are different colors doesn't mean the skin is going to be like that. The skin could just be pink or brown or whatever. So you really have to know the DNA. what kind to get in the DNA. Wow. So, so, so <laughs> I started. Dude, I'm blown so away look, right now. So I'm I, blown look, away. Look, hey, dude. So <laughs> I started just by doing hairless. I didn't worry about the markings or whatever. I just want hairless guinea pigs. So I learned how to do that. And then I was like, I want to learn how to do it to make them hairless, but them have patches on their skin. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. Like, that would be look real cool because they would look like a cow. You know yeah. how cow? I was yeah. like, so it looked like a little cow. And like I, a little cow. And I did it. <laughs> Pocket and, dude. Yeah, and I did it. You know what I mean? I got the ones that it's not about the hair, the, the skin, you know, in the jeans, and yeah. boom. So I used to win ribbons, dude, at the Delmar Fair, first place for the hairless guinea, you know, wow. guinea pigs or whatever. It, it, is it true, Jam, that you're responsible for the hairless cats too? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I'll tell you what, though. <laughs> he's cats he's really first. passionate yeah. about animals. Uh, so yeah, you can tell the hey. reason why his nonprofit also includes animals yes. and music. Like, yeah. like it, it, I'm going to call this episode the Jam Experience yeah. because we've been here just for a short Dude. period of time and you've and already walked even, us through. And we haven't even touched. We haven't even scratched the surface. We haven't even scratched the surface. Wow. Yet, um, <laughs> if somebody want to get involved and you're not with your nonprofit and you know want to check out what you do or get schools involved, get get the youth involved, or maybe even donate some money, man. Where they hit you? Um, Check out the website, see chnetwork.us um uh check out what we're doing um you can also reach out to me um via social network social media at dj jam dpg on instagram yep hit me on the dm and i would love to talk to anybody who wants to get involved definitely that's a beautiful thing man yeah, that's yeah. a beautiful thing so, philanthropy so, is expensive yeah it, it, oh yeah <laughs> man. i mean you know what I mean? especially when you start because it's like you have to come out with all this money until mm-hmm. you get funded yeah. you know what i mean mm-hmm. so um you know which is cool because um you know i'm in a position where i'm grateful for being where i am so it's to me it's like I need to pay back. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know, I was blessed, so I'm going to give blessings. Yep. Um, so, yeah, man, it, the animals 
pay they they pay a a, a a big part of what I do because it's my therapy. Yeah. Right. I'm I'll be locked up in my studio all day and I need to take a break. Right. I go outside with my animals. Dope. And and that that gets me back down. Then yeah, I it calibrates back, you. Yeah, and then I can go back yeah. to the music and I'm fresh. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's yep. work for me. Yep. And so that's what I teach people, like get in tune with the animals and it yeah, helps that's, you out mentally. That's, so. that's a good that's a good point. And shout out to Rick Alvarez because he's the one that told me he's like, Man, people want to give back, but philanthropy is expensive, yeah, right? Yeah. And you were talking about it like nonprofit is a business. Yeah. And speaking of business, man, let's get into the West Coast business. Right. Like, I mean, you, you, I mean, you said your, your Instagram name is DJ Jam DPG. That's he is right. the official DJ. Man, I mean, DJ you West. know, this could be another couple hours, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? But like, yeah, yeah. give us, give us just a little small, little tippet, a little snippet, a little, little bar, start? just Where a little bar. How, how did you, how did you get expense, like the exposure? Cause you being from San Diego and like Bethel talked about it. We're going to jump into the extended version in a minute, but like, man, you got, you got some exposure, man, outside. Like you were probably in my opinion, and there might be fact checkers, fact checkers out there that might, you know, prove me wrong, but you were one of the first DJs that I saw getting recognition in the hip hop realm across the United States. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that's just me being on the outside. Right. Um, how did that happen? Just being good at what you do. But like um, a phone and, call and, and or being, being up in LA or? Um, well, I was, um, when I was doing all the parties and everything down here, um, I was doing most of the parties for the black um, fraternities and sororities gotcha. at San Diego State University, right? So I was doing that for a few years, and it got to the point to where, um, you know, I went to them, and I'm like, hey, man, at the Greek show, I I was doing the Greek shows too, where all the colleges came in, you know, from up and down the coast to, you know, Midwest or whatever. And so that Greek show weekend, there would be parties every night, you know, things going on, the step show. So I was DJing those, but then it got to the point to where, they're like, hey, we want you to coordinate all the events musically, you know what I mean, and come up with a theme and handle everything. You know, we're just going to pay you for the whole weekend. So I was like, cool. And then I was like, hey, you know, since this, can we do some, like, performances at the Greek, at the Step Show? You know what I mean? Like, let's get some groups. They're just in L.A. a couple hours up. I can make some phone calls. So they were like, okay. So I booked – Back then, it was uh, WC and the Mad Circle. Man, with, with crazy Cooley, tunes. With Coolio and crazy yep, tunes and man. the guys. Rest in peace. All right, I, had, I had the dog pound down there when they were just, you know, break, you know breaking. Because that, 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 oh. that was our crew. Right. And I was just fresh with them. So, of course, I had to bring the dog That's pound. Right. They were well, down. Were you a part of a dog pound at this point? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was okay. just fresh with them. You know okay. what I mean? We haven't done and did any events or it wasn't musically yet. We were just a crew at that point. Got you. Um, so, they let me basically, oh, Crazy. So I had WC, Mad Circle, Coolio, and them, the Dog Pound. And then one of my favorite artists back then was Common, Common Sense. Common right? Sense, yeah, when he was still and, like, you know, cracked the 40 and twisted cat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it was, uh, still, his name was still Common Sense. Yeah. And um, he had an album that he had dropped. And I remember I had a cassette. And on the back of the cassette, it said, you know, for booking, Call this number, you know, back in the day. Has yeah, the on the J card. And I didn't know what I was doing. I was just a DJ, but I was <laughs> like, man, Common is dope. They're going to let me book, you know, acts. I'm like, man, I got to get Common. Didn't even know where he lived or anything. But I hit the, dialed the number, and his manager answered. And I'll never forget this dude. His manager's name was his uh, was Squirrel, right? Squirrel? And, uh, yeah, his name squirrel. Was, yeah, his squirrel. Right? Squirrel. Yeah, squirrel. Squirrel. <laughs> so I was like, hey. I That's said, average. Um, I told him who I was. I'm a DJ in San Diego. Um, and I'm, uh, coordinating the Greek show entertainment. I was like, man, it would be great if, you know, if we can get common, you know, here, it's going to be packed. All the colleges, Greek show, they understood the Greek show. They were yeah. like, Whoa, really? San Diego state. They're like, yeah, we'll do it. And I was like, Whoa, okay. You know what I mean? And yeah. How much you guys charging? You know, I didn't never booked anybody before, <laughs> but I went back to the college and I was like, all right, this is what he wants. Okay. Wrote the check, booked him. Just Dude, like that. Just like that. That performance, I got it on video too, but um, 
and I was doing the sound. Like, I had to get the big mixing board. I Dang, never did sound dude. like that. I never did. I was just a DJ, you know what I mean? But yeah. I learned. I learned, that, I learned that weekend, you know what I mean, that the rental place that I had to go pick up the board, how do you work this? You know what I mean? All that thing. And what's right. your phone number just in case? You know what I mean? <laughs> but I pulled it off. I pulled it off because even the step show people had to use the mics. And I had like yeah. seven mics across the, you know what I mean? I had to do the full everything myself. Um, but it was packed, dude. And they will never forget that because they, the artists come and all of them were like, man, this is great man thank you you know what i mean back then in their careers that did a lot for them you know what i mean wow and and after that it was crazy because skip years later when i'm with snoop and we're traveling and doing our thing right years later now we're at a venue or a uh, mtv awards or whatever whatever common is there i'm there with snoop and dre right right, right. common could be way over there doing whatever Turns around, sees me. This is years later. Right. Sees me. Looking like, walks up me, jam? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing here? What You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, dude, I was just a DJ in San Diego. Mm-hmm. What are you doing here? What? He couldn't believe it. And now you're Dr. Dre and every DJ at that point. Yeah, every, yeah, it, yeah, exactly. So he remembered me from booking him at the college deal. And, wow. And his school. The manager squirrel was beside him. So you made an well, impact. You know what, what I mean? Trip. Made an Dude, impact. Made every, an impact. Every time I see Common after that, no matter where we were, always made a point to come up. To, I never had to approach him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Crazy. It's all love. Yeah. All love. It's all Dude. love. Um, but, but yeah, I, you know, as far as experience with artists and things like that, for me being able to meet them because I went Snoop and Dre, I met, like, everybody, get to, got to know people, their, how they are as a person, you mm-hmm. know what I mean, mm-hmm. and all that. So, the, yeah, this experience has just been crazy. Amazing, Perfect. man. <laughs> all right, and Ooh. you're going to get to hear more on The Extendo, man, so go and check it out. Follow The Extendo with DJ Jam. Oh, man, it's it's a pleasure to have you here, bro. We're going to talk a whole lot. Yeah, man. Yeah, we, we, still haven't, we still haven't we talked. Still, we, uh, we, we haven't found big, a, a big artist that you uh, <laughs> found. We haven't talked about your, oh, you know, your yeah, kids' yeah, career, all that. The crypto, crypto, houses, crypto yeah, houses, houses, electric quads, all man, that stuff. So much. We're going to talk about that on The Extendo, man. If you don't know DJ Jam, man, DJ Jam is the official DJ of the West. He's been DJ uh, for decades, for Dre, Snoop, your favorite artist on the West Coast. He is uh, a staple here uh, in San Diego on the West Coast and for West Coast hip-hop. Yeah, so, man, and I think that he just said that he was responsible for bringing Common to the to San Diego for the first time. Oh, we're going to yes. talk about who else Bro, is responsible wow, for next, and you're nah. going to be my <laughs> Hey, thank you uh, so much to our partners, Two Streams. Uh, also, a big shout-out to uh, King Mateo behind, uh, behind uh, you know, the cameras and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, the work. yeah. Check it a producer, King Mateo. King Mateo. And for those people that don't know DJ Jam, I mean, they should, they're probably under a rock, but where can they find you on Instagram at? I know you said uh, it earlier, but. Uh, at DJ Jam DPG. Okay, perfect, man. Yeah. My name is Beto Perez. My Instagram's at Cali Burrito. Hey, what's up, everybody, man? Thank you for tuning in. My name is Derek Santiago. You can find me at Derek Goes. Hey, Beto, man, another great, great yep. Average People episode, man. Thank you for pulling up. Thank you, Jam. Man, thank, thank you, Jam, you. Thank for, you for, for the amazing me. opportunity, brother. I appreciate you. Thank you guys you. for having me. Go yeah, check man. out the Extendo, man. It's more on there. Hey. It's the Average People video show. Thank you. Peace. Peace. Peace.